If you're asking, no, I did not have this on my 2023 bingo card. All right, so you guys know this is the place for racing news around the globe. So if you have not yet done so, go down below and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I also just started a podcast, uh, the David Land Podcast. I know, what a creative name. Uh, so you should definitely check that out Mondays at 8 o'clock p.m. Still trying to figure out exactly how to integrate the podcast content into the, ch into the channel as a whole. So uh, work in progress to those of you complaining about it. Um, stay tuned. But we've got a few things to talk about in the world of racing that aren't related to Kyle Busch and Mexico really quick. So let's get into those. Verizon is back with Will Power in the NTT IndyCar series on a multi-year deal. And to explain to everyone in the audience what multi-year means, it usually means two to three years, usually three years at the maximum. But that's good because Will Power has kind of flirt, uh, flirted with the idea of uh, retiring at some points, but I think he had one of his best seasons ever in IndyCar last year and so it's good to see that his sponsors returning and I think that also means that Will's going to be returning for a little while longer. The TV ratings for NASCAR's Clash at the Coliseum were quite disappointing. Down 15% last year though they had some serious competition from a literal flag football game and the Oscars, uh, the Emmys, the, the Tonys, eh, who cares. Uh, I definitely was down on the event this year. Uh, you guys have heard my thoughts both on the podcast and, and in the uh, regular videos. It was uh, it was a crash fest. It wasn't very good television, in my opinion, and there was too much celebrity worship. And I think the TV numbers reflect that. But this is pretty big news. Connor Daly is going to run the Daytona 500 for the money team. Of course, I should actually qualify that statement and say he's attempting to qualify for the Daytona 500 with Floyd Mayweather's money team. It's the same car and the same team he ran the uh, the Roval race with last year, the number 50 Chevrolet with Bitnile sponsorship. That's his IndyCar sponsor crossing over once again. Like I said, it's an open car, so he'll have to qualify to make the show, but it looks like only one, maybe two cars will be going home when we get the official Daytona 500 entry list sometime next week. And there's a few questions that we're going to have to answer throughout this video and discussing this Connor Daly thing. The first thing I want to say is it's great to see this crossover. I think I mentioned it when I uh, made an appearance on the Garage Guys during the Rolex 24, but to me, the big events, Indy 500, Rolex 24, you know, Daytona 500, 24 Hours of Le Mans, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever your big event is, I think that they are the best when drivers cross over and attempt them from other facets of the sport. So seeing Connor Daly, an IndyCar driver, and a driver who's very good in 500-mile races, uh, he led a lot of laps last year. He actually led the most laps in the 2021 Indianapolis 500. I think he's going to be right at home. We saw the money team car qualify last year in the hands of Kaz Gralla. So we know it's a capable car, at least capable enough of getting into the field. Uh, I think Connor would be able to alleviate a lot of stress if he can uh, time or quote unquote speed his way in to the Daytona 500. We've seen that in the past. It's going to be very interesting, too, uh, with as few uh, open cars as we have in the Daytona 500 this year, exactly who is going to home, because it's almost certainly going to be a big name. Jimmy Johnson's in an open car. Travis Pastrana is in an open car for 2311 racing. And, of course, now we have Connor Daly in the, the Bit Nile car for Floyd Mayweather's team. And so it makes me think to myself... What it's really going to come down to is which manufacturer got the aerodynamic changes right or who was allowed to make their car slicker than everybody else's. Because we've seen that play a factor, a major factor, a lot of times in the, I guess we're not calling them restrictor plate races anymore, but the super speedway races where horsepower is very lacking and aero is the name of the game, especially when you're trying to 
make a field on your speed. And so if the Toyotas are the dog, then Travis Pastrana is not going to make his Daytona 500 on speed. He'll have to race in. And his lack of experience, though he has a lot of stock car experience, it's not a lot of recent experience, and it's not any in the next-gen car. Of course, that goes for Jimmy Johnson and Connor Daly, too. Connor's only made one start, which is the most experience in the next-gen car of the three of those drivers. But, of course, that was not on a super speedway. So if the Chevy's good, then I could see a scenario where the two cars that get in on speed are Jimmy Johnson and Connor Daly. The other question about all of this is, where's Elio? Uh, you guys may remember that the SRX boss, uh, Donald Hawk, said, hey, Elio, uh, you won an SRX race. You are going to get to run a NASCAR race, and Elio wanted to run the Daytona 500. And it seemed like the likely landing spot for him would be the number 50 car with Floyd Mayweather's team. It's very interesting that, that this deal did not get done. I thought it was a slam dunk, and I thought it would be really cool to see Elio in the Daytona 500. But there's been a lot of talk about Elio and his future recently. Questions have arisen, especially post-Rolex 24, where his uh, Meyer Shank racing teammate, Tom Blumquist, really made a name for himself and really put himself on the map with some mass monstrously fast stints in that race. And so some people are beginning to jump to the conclusion that Tom Blomquist will be in an IndyCar starting in the 2024 season. And Elio Castroneves, of course, is saying, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I would prefer that not to be the case. But I also think it's interesting that maybe something that would have taken his focus away from his IndyCar job has fallen off of the calendar. So I'm excited to see Connor Dale in the Daytona 500. I hope he represents Indiana well. So then there's Strange, and then there's Kyle Busch Strange. And this story went fairly under the radar yesterday because there was a report that Kyle Busch might have to spend up to three and a half years in a Mexican prison. And, you know, when you hear that out of context, you go, okay, well, that's definitely crap. And let's be honest here, like, Kyle Busch gets a lot of clicks, and I'm sure there are people willing to stoop to much lower uh, levels than that to try to get clicks out of Kyle Busch on their website. Uh, so, you know, to be honest, not many people believed this right away. And it's nothing against the reporters that actually broke this story because they ended up being absolutely right, at least to a certain extent. And that was that Kyle Busch himself made a response to this on Twitter, confirming that he had indeed been detained in Mexico. And this is what it reads. In late January, Samantha and I enjoyed a several-day vacation in Mexico. When departing the country, my handgun was flagged during a routine screening at the airport. I have a valid concealed carry permit from my local authority and adhere to all handgun laws. But I made a mistake by forgetting it was in my bag. Discovery of the handgun led to my detainment while the situation was resolved. I was not aware of any Mexican law and had no intention of bringing a handgun into Mexico. When it was discovered, I fully cooperated with the authorities, accepted the penalties, and returned to North Carolina. I apologize for my mistake and appreciate the respect shown by all parties as we resolved the matter. My family and I consider this issue closed. So, yeah, this is what we're talking about in 2023. Um I, I and I want to just say that I saw a lot of like, and I understand there's a lot of jokes about this. And I saw like a, a, a Photoshop of, of Kyle Bush as Clint Eastwood, which I thought was extremely funny. But if you actually think back, uh, Kyle Bush was involved in an incident last year at the Mall of America where there was a shooting in the mall and his family was actually in the mall when this happened. I believe they were doing an appearance at the M&M store there. And, you know, I wonder if, if Kyle Busch took it upon himself, having dealt with an incident like that, uh, to beef up his protection of his family. And so it makes a lot of sense, frankly, especially if this is kind of a, a newer thing for Kyle Busch to have a concealed carry permit, uh, that he would maybe forget that he's packing heat and then take uh, that said heat into a different country. So what happened to the three and a half year jail sentence that had been reported earlier? Well, it's a three and a half year jail sentence or you pay a fine. Kyle Busch clearly paid the fine. So 
you know, like you said, this is a resolved issue. There was no malicious intent here whatsoever. It's a shame that it happened, and I'm sure it was not a fun time for Kyle Busch and his family to experience something like that. But at the end of the day, is this a big story? No. The big story, really, is how fast Kyle Busch looked in that RCR car at the Clash. And I'm looking forward to seeing him race not only in the Daytona 500, but the rest of the year. It could be a bit of a revenge tour for Kyle Busch, and I think that is going to be an exciting part of this season. So thank you guys so much for watching. More videos coming, so stay tuned. Obviously, a big week coming up with the Daytona 500, and then two weeks later is the IndyCar season opener, where I will be on site in St. Petersburg, Florida. We'll see you there.